Spoke and Words by Brian Adams of Redwood City, California. This piece features a bicycle wheel, paper, laminate, and wood. In this multimedia piece, Spoke and Words, the artist fuses the fond childhood memory of exploring his hometown on a bicycle with the adult experience of a cross-country bicycle trip. As a boy, the artist and his friends would use a clothespin to affix a baseball card to the bicycle frame such that a slap, slap, slap would be created with each momentary contact of the passing spokes in the spinning wheel, one of the signature sounds of summer. As an adult, the artist kept a journal of a two-wheeled trip from Utah to New Jersey that spanned five weeks and more than 2,000 miles. The handwritten text from that journal is now superimposed on the cards which contain maps of the very cities and geography he passed through. Tracing Outlines by Rhiannon Alpers of Denver, Colorado. The artist says tracing outlines compiles a multitude of layered shapes to reconstruct landscapes stemming from aerial views of the places I have lived over the years as an adult. Created using cut sheet magnets and mono printing techniques to print, the shapes themselves intertwine and overlay throughout the book to become landscapes in their own right. The layered shapes illustrate the melding of concept of place over one's lifespan through many homes, cities, travels, and countries. Water is a touchstone for her and the place of her reflection. To create the piece, she's used aerial maps of water-edged cities she's called home to create the physical magnet forms, shapes, which are the mountain edges in the book. Greed by Judy Anderson of Denver, Colorado. This work features rice paper, ink, polyester rug hooking mesh, and thread. The artist says her work responds to social, political, cultural issues as viewed through her personal lens. Treating books as a creative form is a natural expression for her because of her love of paper, words, ink, images, and narrative. The first book she made was in the mid-70s, and it opened a world of possibilities, leading to a lifelong exploration of layered storytelling. The books can be traditional or experimental, from handheld books to large sculptural works. They juxtapose words, images, and form. This sculptural book, Greed, is a response to Paul Manfred's ostrich skin jacket as a reflection and expression of greed and outlandish consumption and the selfish attitude of not in my backyard. The poetry is by Ginny Hoyle, and the book is part of the exhibition Worn World. Firestorms by Charlene Asado, Mountain View, Hawaii. This artist's book is a double flag book. The artist says, I find it very exciting that a simple fold changes a two-dimensional plane into a three-dimensional form. Artist's books give me a wonderful avenue to convey this energy. Firestorms was created after the devastating fires in California in 2020. This book opens up to portray the chaos and turmoil on all sides. The paste paper design conveys this inferno. My Pricklies by Andre Lee Bassway of North Kingstown, Rhode Island. The artist says, as a Korean American born in Brooklyn but raised in South Korea in both the West and East Coast of America, I live between two cultures, feeling forever an outsider in either place. Feeling displaced and never feeling grounded anywhere, I seek to find my own roots. Lately, I've been drawn to the cactus, admiring its ability to thrive in intense conditions as I have survived the pandemic as a single mother. It is a hard protective exterior, but inside it has a unique ability to store water. Native American cultures believe that the cactus represents warmth, protection, and motherly love. This accordion flag book transforms the cacti into marching feet. They remind me to stay strong, endure, and remember the essence of my strength and beauty is within. Work in Progress by Surveyne Briand of Palo Alto, California. 
This is a one-of-a-kind artist's book. Inspired by famous paintings and etchings, Work in Progress is a series of monotypes collected in an artist's book, an introspective pursuit of what shapes a person and what makes life meaningful. It is a very personal work and an invitation to a conversation for the many people and works it references. Fairmont Color Card by Sarah Bryant of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This work is letterpress, textile collage, and foil stamping. Fairmont Color Card is an exploration of the roles that textile, color, and fashion have played in the origin story of landfill culture. Fairmont Color Card employs brochure structures and production techniques historically used for color cards and sample books, including thread winding, foil blocking, and die cutting. Text for the project was called from 20th century color cards and combined with excerpts from the Waste Makers, written by Vance Packard in 1960. Research was conducted at Yale University Biren Collection of Books on Color in 2019. Materials including clothing, bedding, and paper offcuts were sourced from her domestic space. Fairmont Color Card seeks to challenge the meaning of sample books and place them in a context of planned obsolescence. Half Premonitions of the Moon by Sarah Bryant of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This work is letterpress printed from oak and polymer. Half Premonitions of the Moon is an instrument, modular score, and a set of performance instructions housed in a custom-built enclosure. This project was a collaboration with Holland Hobson, a sound and media artist, composer, and improviser. The customizable score is assembled from a set of 36 cards. This allows individuals or groups to use chance operations to create a unique version of the piece for each performance. The instrument itself is a custom-designed laser-cut bull roarer, played by swinging it in circles on the end of a string. Bull roars are some of the oldest and most widespread instruments in human cultures. They can be found across the globe from Australasia to Africa and the Americas and are often used to evoke natural phenomena such as wind and rain during ritual events. This musical work favors patience, stasis, and quiet focus over drama, development, and sudden contrasts. Multiple Discovery by Sarah Bryant of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This work is letterpress and reso printed on Zirkle Book and IBO. The artist says multiple discovery occurs when innovations are made independently and simultaneously in different locations. In this project, a collective of five artists uses multiple discovery as a metaphor for our own remote collaborative practice. Working with Common Horizon Line and Color Palette, we each developed imagery for this artist's book in separate studios. Printed sheets were then exchanged in batches of 10. Individually, we wrote and printed text gathered from a shared collection of source material, then collated and folded our sheets into a unique set of 10 copies. The resulting edition of 50 is made up of five variations. 100 Best Books, A Bridge by Carol Bertner of Richmond, Virginia. This is a spiral bound book with an acetate cover. The artist says, in 1998, a division of Random House Publishing selected the 100 best books of the 20th century. For those who don't have the time to read every word of the book, I offer an abridged version of each one. First and last sentences only. This piece, printed in 2022, is the fifth copy of my 1998 100 Best Books Abridged. True Colors by Carol Bertner of Richmond, Virginia. The artist says, much of my work addresses personal and collective memory, and nothing is more nostalgic to me than Crayola crayons. This book examines how far generic crayons stray from the gold standard of Crayola.
Dreams of Flight, The Nesting Season by Rebecca Shamley of Simi Valley, California. The artist says, during the long months of the pandemic isolation, I began documenting many birds that came to my backyard feeders and noticed their unique behaviors. With a telephoto lens, I was able to record detailed and intimate images of my avian visitors. As often happens, the passion I felt for the birds grew into the idea for an artist's book. Dreams of Flight, The Nesting Season is an interconnected story of three different species of birds that nested in my suburban yard during the spring nesting seasons of 2020 to 2021. The book was created entirely at my home. To Grow by Ashley Devan of Powder Springs, Georgia. This book art is screen printed. The artist says, To Grow is a pamphlet stitch bound book with screen printed images. To Grow is inspired by creation stories drawing on themes of eternal self-feeding cycles. Here, I choose to center women as the main characters of our story in which they practice communal activities to forward the cycle of growth. This book is an exploration of women building, growing, and nurturing one another to further themselves and their community. The imagery in my artwork is largely inspired by mythology, folklore, traditional stories, and the female role within them. My artwork draws on the atmosphere created when women come together as a community, be it physically or metaphorically. I seek to explore the unspoken feeling, like the elemental force of nature, that connects women to one another. Myth and story are the vessel through which I communicate these ideas. Her Home, Your House by Ashley Devan of Powder Springs, Georgia. This book art is screen printed with cut paper. Her Home, Your House is a single sheet folded book with cut paper inserts and screen printed images. Her Home, Your House is inspired by the idea of the planet as the Earth Goddess's home. The book looks at the goddess's interactions with the Earth, nature, as a caretaker and as the human race's comparative relationship to that planet. Electricity and Electronics by Ben Danino of Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is an altered book sculpture. The artist says, my piece, Electricity and Electronics, is one of my biblio excavations. In these works, I start with a vintage book usually an outdated reference or textbook. I work page by page from the back of the book, backing specifically chosen illustrations with cardstock, then removing the excess text and imagery. The end result is a collage of imagery which was never present in the book, and I assist it in revealing. Once I am finished, I seal the textbook shut so that only the cover opens. This allows for easy display, as well as the added convenience of shelving the book with the rest of the readable library for storage. I enjoy retaining the utilitarian nature of the book, highlighting its continued physical existence as a book and not just a visual work on a wall. Flight Data by Jan Dove of Port Angeles, Washington. This artist book features pigment print on paper. An artist's book in a black box, flight data consists of one accordion fold book with original text by the artist and four Jacob's Ladders. Each Jacob's Ladder visually comments on the context of the accordion fold book. Each is a little book with the first and last pages written. They invite the viewer to fill in the middle part, responding to the central theme or to the images if desired. The important thing about the Jacob's Ladders is that they are toys reminding us adults not to take ourselves too seriously. Craft, Shaping a Surfboard by Jessica Dunn of San Francisco, California. This artist's book features aquatint images. The artist says, Craft, Shaping a Surfboard is an exploration of what it means to spend days working with your hands. 
The handiwork required to make a surfboard, an etching, or an artist's book is the inspiration that enabled me to fuse my love of the craft of making prints with a lifetime spent in the world of surfers. Dave Parmenter is a renowned surfboard shaper, writer, and former professional surfer. He writes personally and often furiously about shaping boards, surfing, and the contemporary surf culture. In his dedication to his craft, I found something akin to my feelings about my own work. His article in the Surfer's Journal about shaping a surfboard is excerpted in this book. My partner, Mark Reneker, is a devoted big wave surfer. I have lived for years with as many as 45 surfboards of varying lengths and silhouettes. The craftsmen involved in the task, their tools, and the terminology all fascinated me. Book Brain, a book by Lauren Dykes with Chaz Dykes of Tampa, Florida. The artist says, as a daughter of an author, I grew up with an appreciation for books. In an age of tablets and smartphones, more and more books are taken to landfills. I wanted to find a way to give these discarded books a longer shelf life. That is when I discovered the art of book folding. By using different techniques, I transform the book pages, creating images, words, and logos into handcrafted custom art, all the while telling a story. The tools needed are a ruler, pencil, and a small pair of scissors. It also takes patience, accuracy, precision, and time to execute the intricacy of the art form. It is a great way to upcycle and to give new life to used books. Glacial Movement by Sharon Gatula of Kenmore, Washington. This book is an encaustic on acrylic panel with paper. Destroying forests, rising temperatures, bloody battles. The human species has created a myriad of methods to destroy our surroundings in the process rendering us extinct. Each book in the Encyclopedia of Extinction explores how our modern life impacts the earth using color, texture, surface, and fragility of construction. Signatures, stitches, and marks are all chosen to symbolize death, rebirth, and grief. The books are intended as sculpture, and each book rests on a hand-painted encaustic wood base. The ice is melting fast, and our world leaders sit on their hands, unable or unwilling to make any meaningful change. Glacial movement explores how the glaciers are disappearing from our lack of care. Be Healed by Nell Hewitt of Spokane Valley, Washington. The artist says, in April of 2019, I had a mental breakdown that sent me to the emergency room. The definition of heal is to be made whole. I have broken parts repaired, but the missing parts filled. It's been hard for me to accept that I can't be functioning without medication, that the darkness and terror will always be in the back of my mind. But I am still here and I'm better. I may not be able to be made whole by the grazing of a garment and not for lack of faith, but I can be made whole by the next best thing. In Bed with a Fever by Turner Hilliker of Ashburn, Virginia. This work is silk screen, pen, and ink. In Bed with a Fever is a one-sheet book structure that details a narrative of gradually increasing symptoms of an illness. The structure of the book allows the viewer to read linearly or unfold the pages to experience the chaotic nature of the illness. The Whole Barnyard by David Johnson of Muncie, Indiana. This book is intaglio and letterpress accordion book. The artist says, I have been drawing animals most of my life. Some of the first images made by man are animals. I am from Iowa and some of my relatives were farmers. I go to the country fair every summer and draw the animals there. For two years, there was no fair. It returned this past year and I tried to take advantage. 
I try to fill my sketchbook. I like the accordion book format. It provides me the opportunity to stretch the images out across a tabletop, much like a parade of animals on the way to the show ring at the county fair. Mollusk by Peggy Johnston of Des Moines, Iowa. This book is tea-stained ovals, linen thread, and a bead. It is fascinating that a shellfish is able to transform a piece of grit into a semi-precious gem. Folded tea-stained ovals and pink vellum ovals are sewn into an ovoid shape using a link stitch. The end band tapers beyond the edge of the piece and curls down to a point. A single pearl is at the opposite end of the band. Knots, a mixed media artist book by Joanna Kidd of Davis, California. The sculpture artist book Knots represents the idea of the force of communicating and of constructing a phrase, literally knitting the thread of the conversation. While the form of a sheet of paper created by the knitting references the pages of a bound book, the long wound form of the hem tape also recalls a scroll. The page remains attached to the knitting needles and the ball of yarn, leaving the work as a reference to the process of communication rather than the finished action. 65 by Beth Lee of Bozeman, Montana. This artist's book features gouache and various papers. The artist says, the clean, strong imagery of this text appeals to me. Indeed, the visuals are so strong that I endeavored to make the letters themselves illustrate the poem, which describes so beautifully the value of words as well as our tenuous hold on them. Each book in this edition is a manuscript book. Hand lettering seemed to me critical in the immediacy of the text. Crotch, a book of ink on handmade paper, case bound by Miranda Mayer of Brooklyn, New York. Crotch is a unique book of 108 ink-drawn pages in a case binding with contrasting slipcase. The interior is made of 27 A4 sheets bearing ink brush work on front and back, then folded and nested into signatures creating new drawings by pairing different half pages together. Most of the ink in the drawings sits in the gutter of the binding, hence the book title, Crotch. This word choice, rather than gutter or binding, intentionally links the book's form to the body, but with a colloquial, even coarse, suggestion. The closed book's cover is a formal and subdued, but with the bold-faced title, crotch. The juxtaposition of aesthetic with connotation creates intrigue without leading the reader's expectations. Here, here. Metadata Mining, an intaglio letterpress on BFK Folio's artist book by Mary V. Marsh of Oakland, California. In Here, Here, Metadata Mining, cell towers disguised as trees represent our need for constant connection, our desire for infrastructure to be invisible, and our complicity in the data extraction industry. The cell tower trees are silent witnesses to our movements and interactions, enabling the transformation of our attention into commerce. The intaglio printed cell towers evoke a romantic and iconic view. Screenshots of maps and text show daily habits of sharing locations, plans, and trivial comments. Letterpress printed folios are adhered to an accordion fold spine in a Haiti Kyle structure. Holes cut into pages reveal wires and data, unseen systems in our infrastructure. David's Ankles, a laser cut and laser etched paper artist book by Bridget McGraw of Oakland, California. The artist says, unanswerable questions lurk in my work. Can a 21st century bookbinder transform thoughts and materials that emerge from the hands, minds, and machines of our ancestors into coherent artwork? How might the exactitude 
of digital tools and processes prompt people to appreciate the fragility of materiality and the strength of ideas? Most of my pieces pay homage to, or grapple with, an expression of truth. My skirmishes with media are a white flag, surrendering to the present. Even as people become more reliant on untrustworthy digital infrastructures that pretend to proffer truth, we remain mammals seeking facts. David's Ankles, a collaboration with Insayadat, expresses a desire to balance the longing for perfection with the reality of imperfection. Thirteen Years, Fourteen Pieces by Melanie Malniski of Williamstown, Massachusetts. Using sea plastic, turtle shell, library board, and book cloth. The artist says, 25 years ago, I became a United States Peace Corps volunteer on the island of San Kitts in the Caribbean. During a 2005 return visit, while beachcombing with a friend, we discovered a green sea turtle washed up on the beach. It likely hit its head on a fishing boat. It was long gone, but it was heartbreaking. Some of its shell had broken off and we gathered it up. Fast forward 13 years. I walked the same beach with the same friend. This time I was shocked by the quantity of sea plastic that I picked up. Not just big pieces, but tiny finds, as beautiful as sea glass, and just as heartbreaking as finding that turtle years ago. These three books all use the same storage book structure. One for the turtle, one for the sea plastic, one for a poem. Exposition are the timekeepers of progress by Colleen Mullins of San Francisco, California. This artist book features archival pigment prints on Hanamule rice paper, tipped in reproductions of archival materials, note paper, and tops ruled paper inserts. Exposition are the timekeepers of progress is about the transformation of history into lore, fact into fiction, occupation into resettlement, and all of it the result of the shifting of the center of one town plaza. It is an examination of monumental removal seen through the eyes of Arcata, California, and its statue of William McKinley, removed in 2019. The book draws its narrative from conflicting stories and histories of the president, the statue, and the process of a community both coming together and falling apart over an effigy that arguably never belonged there. Rolls and Tubes, A History of Photography by Colleen Mullins of San Francisco, California. This work is a clamshell box with breakaway false floor portfolio and box. This is an edited, transform, recontextualized, and humorous slice of photographic history. This work was produced in a moment of elongated reflection during the height of the pandemic. Four artists comprising the Rolls and Tubes Collective examined the events unfolding around them and through a collaborative effort made images in response. Every one of these images pulls from the history of photography, utilizing the classical canon along with pieces that were perhaps overlooked by historians. In response to the ongoing pandemic shortages, the collective members individually selected photos to restage with toilet paper as the main foil in each composition. The new pieces reveal another history one that originates within each collective member's personal experience with the history of photography. O, oh, a letterpress on paper, laser cut, and hand-bound artist book by Mervy Pacoste of Manhattan, Kansas. The artist says, I wish to offer people an opportunity for a quiet exploration and discovery of topography and its possibilities for expression as simple forms. 
The O book is an exploration of the letter form O, its roundness and curves, and how they can create movement and visual interest. The form of O lends itself well to the idea of seeing or peeking through objects, such as keyholes. Thus, this became a tunnel book, where the viewer can physically look through the forms and experience the overlap and interaction the letters create.